بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله جعل لكم من انفسكم ازواجا وجعل لكم من ازواجكم بنين وحفدة ورزقكم من الطيبات افبالباطل يؤمنون وبنعمة الله هم يكفرون وقال تعالى ومن اياته ان خلق لكم من انفسكم ازواجا لتسكنوا اليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة ان في ذلك لايات لقوم يتفكرون وقال تعالى هو الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وجعل منها زوجها ليسكن اليها فلما تغشاها حملت حملا خفيفا فمرت به فلما اثقلت دعا الله ربهما لئن اتيتنا صالحا لنكونن من الشاكرين فلما اتاهما صالحا جعل له شركاء فيما اتاهما فتعالى الله عما يشركون وقال تعالى ولا تنكحوا المشركات حتى يؤمن ولا امة مؤمنة خير من مشركة ولو اعجبتكم ولا تنكحوا المشركين حتى يؤمنوا ولا عبد مؤمن خير من مشرك ولو اعجبكم اولئك يدعون الى النار والله يدعو الى الجنة والمغفرة باذنه ويبين آياته للناس لعلهم يتذكرون وقال تعالى فإن طلقها فلا تحل له من بعد حتى تنكح زوجا غيره وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا معشر الشباب من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج فإنه أغض للبصر وأحصن للفرج ومن لم يستطع عليه بالصوم فإنه له بجاء وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام تنكح المرأة لأربع لمالها ولحسبها ولجمالها ولدينها فاغفر بذات الدين تلب اليداء وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام ما استفاد المؤمن بعد تقوى الله عز وجل خيرا له من امرأة صالحة إن نظر إليها سرته وإن أمرها أطاعته وإن أقسم عليها أبرته وإن غاب عنها حفظته في نفسها وماله وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام لم تر للمتحابين مثل النكاح وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام إن أعظم النكاح بركة أي سره مؤونة صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ما قال ربنا وخالقنا ورازقنا من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حبيب مريم اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Respected elders, brothers, friends Ladies listening at home Ladies come for بتاعي جنس بسي بتاعي ما شاء الله Respect the other ladies Today's topic is The beauty of marriage in Islam the title shows that marriage is a beautiful thing. A person should get married. Islam encourages marriage. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself got married. And we used to enter the Sahaba into wedlock. He saw one Sahabi who was young, healthy, 
who had wealth and good house, property, he asked him, do you have all this? Yes. Are you married? He said, no. Why don't you get married? Get married. Find a nice wife for yourself. And he said, ma fil jannati azabun. In Jannat, there will be no lonely person. Kumara, lonely person. In Jannat, everybody will be in pairs, husband, wife. No one will be in Jannat without wife. So if you want to go to Jannat, get a wife for yourself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself got married. He said, Arba'un min sunan al mursaleen al-hayaru wa ta'afuru wa siwaku wa nikah Four things are among the sunnah of all the Anbiya alayhi wa salawati wa taslima. Modesty, applying perfume, good fragrance, brushing the teeth with miswak, and getting married. Hazrat Maulana Idris Kandalvi Rahmatullahi writes in his tafsir that among the 124,000 prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, none were unmarried except for two Yahya alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam, John the Baptist and Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam, he did not get married because he had dedicated his life for ibadah and worship in Baytul Muqdis. <coughs> he used to spend day in, day out, 24-7 inside Masjid. And he would be engaged in, busy in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he had a very short life. Maybe he was only 30, somewhere around in his 30s when he was killed by the people of that area, the Israelis, the Banu Israel. Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salatu was salam, his murder was also attempted but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him and rose him high above the heavens. He was 33 at the age of take, being taken high above the heavens. And he did not get married. However, when he comes back to kill the jar and all matters are settled down, Yajuj Majuj's matters are finished and Islam will prevail throughout the earth, he will get married. It's in the books of Ahadith. Mubassiri Muhaddisin have narrated that he will also get married. He will have two sons and then he will die. And he will be buried with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there is only one prophet left now among the 124,000. This shows that it is from among the sunnahs of all the Rasul's messengers. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he once said to Sa'id ibn Jubair, get married. Again, after a few days, he said, get married. He said, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. Now, for the third time, Abdullah ibn Abbas instructed him, and he said, Tazawwaj, fa inna khayra hadihi al-ummati akhtara ha nisa'an. Get married, because the best person in this ummah had the most women. SubhanAllah. Meaning, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had nine wives at the time of his death. So, it is his sunnah. So, following his sunnah, then Sayyid ibn Jubayr had to get married. So, Marriage is something beautiful and it's recommended, it's encouraged. Our Sharia says that you should get married. And uh, celibacy is not an option. You can't stay celibate, you have to be into wedlock. Under normal circumstances, wedding, marriage would be sunnah. But under extreme circumstances, it can become fard as well. Because when a person has a, is at a risk of falling into zina, fornication, then zina is haram. And if he has to get married to avoid zina, then marriage will become farz according. He will have to get married in order to avoid that zina, if he has no other way of avoiding zina. In Bahru Rai, it's written that zina, uh, sorry, al nikahu sunnatun, when, where Kanjud Daqayak says, al nikahu sunnatun wa inda tawqani wajibun. Tawqan means shiddati shawq and shiddati shabab when the excitement of the building up of the passion in order to uh, get re uh, 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 release that tension and passion excitement it becomes fuzz and in, under that circumstance you can become fuzz Sayyid Ibn Nujayim al-Misri writes over there that sometimes nikah can become fuzz as well and it does happen in some circumstances we have many young men 
or young ladies as well, young women, they get to the age of 35, 40, and they don't want to get married. I went to one place, there was a bayan regarding wedding. So I mentioned this subject. Afterwards, a person comes to me, takes me in one corner, one and a half. Can you take some time out and speak to my brother? And regarding what? And he's, he's not getting married. He doesn't want to get married. I want to say alone. Why? And he's a pilot in VA, British Airways. So he flies the planes. So he goes around from one country to the other. He lives near Heathrow Airport. And he has his own house, very good income. And he's always flying out here and there. And he says, I'm not going to get married. Let me say something to him. He's 38, he's nearly 40 now. And he's not getting married. I said, Astaghfirullah. If he's not getting married, then he's doing something bad. Especially if he's pilot and hostess. Tawbah Astaghfirullah. He has to get married. It becomes fuss upon him. Because he's got that. I came across this person who is a teacher. And uh, he's a good person. He's got his own house. He's not even living with his parents. He's left his parents. Even though his parents need him, he says, no, I'm not living in my own house. He's got good income. He's bought his own house. And he's living alone. Now he's, he's, he, you know, he, he's a teacher now. He's teaching in secondary school, maybe uh, elderly students, and he's not getting married. So for these types of people, marriage will become first upon them. Not only sunnah, first. You have to get married. We have heard of young girls who say, who wants to get married? Roti pakana, kapade dhona, astri karna, ye wo ghar ka sara kaam ka chodo. Ghar mein aaram se baito, it binanti ye bichar. And you have to do all the cooking and washing for the husband, cleaning the house. I'm okay with my family, my mom does everything for me. And you know, half and half share everything out. Then this single life is better and it is oh, good for me. No, you have to get married. It's just girls. If they, if they are, are, are at risk of falling into zina fornication, for them, marriage will become further. So marriage is something recommended, encouraged, and sunnah, and sometimes it becomes as well, we have to understand this subject and we have to do something about it. Our elders, they have to take care of their young ones. When your sons and daughters reach the age of marriage, you have to worry about them. You have to find a suitable partner for them. It's your responsibility. Go out there, search, go, you have to do the necessary procedures and find a suitable partner for them. So, um, uh, um, if we look back at the history of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do we see? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself used to get the sahabas married. He, he used to look for a partner for them. Otherwise, sahaba among their families, they would, you know, they wouldn't take marriage as a big thing. One of the reasons why people don't get married is because it's so expensive. And uh, you have to spend thousands of pounds of this reception and that ceremony and this and that and all of these copies from other people. This party, stack party, hen party, that party, wedding party, Tawbah, Tawbah, Astaghfirullah. These customs which come in from other uh, communities, they, they put a burden upon us. Or from our Indian subcontinent where we come from, from the, some, some uh, system from the Hindus have creeped inside us. And because of that, you know, we think that this is necessary, that's necessary, that's why. No, marriage is very simple thing. Many Sahabas, they used to get married and they never even informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I am married. Was there something when a suitable partner is sold and they get married? Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, his father died in the battle of Uhud. Now after some time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes out on another expedition. And when he is returning, Jabir radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, can I rush home? Can I get to Medina before you? Rasulullah said, why is it I have got married? I am married to my wife is waiting for me. Rasulullah said, you got married? Yes, I got married. To whom did you get married? I got married to a Sayyiba. Sayyiba means someone who had been married before, an elderly woman. So Rasulullah asked, why not a virgin with whom you can play and she can play with you? Allah bikran tula'ibuha wa tula'ibu. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, my father died and he left behind nine sisters for me. Now, if I were to get married to a young girl, then that would be a tenth sister. So I thought I should get an older one who could take care of them, comb their hairs, <coughs> take care of the household, bring them up properly. That's why I got married to someone who is a little bit elderly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approved of, the action, of his action. He said, yes, you've done a good thing. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, when he arrived at Medina Munawwara, after some time, he was a businessman in Makkah Mukarramah. He left his whole business, his house, his property, his family, everything behind. He just came with the clothes he was wearing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
made brotherhood between Abdul Rahman ibn Awf and Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah. So Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah said to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, MashaAllah, welcome, welcome. He greeted him, embraced him, he took him home. He kept him really well, fed him. And then he said to him next day, you know, I have, I have, I'm a very wealthy person. I have these two orchards and baths of palm trees. You take one of them, I will keep the other one. I have two wives. You choose the one you like, I will divorce her, and you can get married to her. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf said, Barakallahu lak fi ahli kumani. May Allah bless you, give you barakat in your family and in your uh, property. Jazakallah, thank you very much. But tell me where is the market? I will go and earn myself. He went, and because he, is, he was business minded, so you know he bought a little bit and sold here, and bought from there and sold here. And in the evening, he came with a little bit of cheese to the home for the home, everybody to eat. Next day, he brought something else. And after a few days, he got married. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him in the masjid and he had some yellow patches or spots on, on his clothes. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what is, what is that yellow color on your clothes? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, he got married. He said, you got married? He said, yes. Then the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Barakallahu lak, awlim, walau bishan. May Allah bless you in your marriage. Give us walima, even if though you have to buy a boat for that walima. And he did walima of, 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 of one boat like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed. Now that yellow color which was on his clothes, he was not, some people do this rasme pili before the marriage, they throw yellow color onto the dula. No, it was not something like that. It was embracing the wife and the wife was might be wearing yellow clothes and from there the yellow stains came on his clothes otherwise there was no custom of this something rasme pili or throwing yellow color on the sahaba at that time they were they, they, they didn't have any money to do all that stuff they were they were poor they were going through hard times so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not even informed of these marriages of Jabir and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf and many others because they had other important things to do. So they knew that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is extremely busy. Why do you know to invite him just to come to our mahalla and give uh, do my nikah ceremony and uh, 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 say bless my nikah and this and that? No, no, no. marriage is a simple thing. Other Sheikh Ramatullah writes in one place that you know marriage is an ibadah. So if you want to do some form of ibadah, like say, if you want to pray two rakat nafil namaz, I'm going to post a card to everyone that I'm going to pray two rakat namaz, come and see me. No, you're not going to invite anyone, you're not going to write cards to people to invite them to see you praying two rakat namaz. Man, it is an ibadah. It should be simple. Do it in the most simplest way possible. So one of the reasons why people are scared of getting married is the cost and the implica cost imp that the implications that have it, it have behind the behind the cost of the marriage. So we should get rid of all these customs. Make a simple wedding. Do walima and um, whatever is in your ability, do it. You know they say that uh, extend your fee as long as the sheet is. Don't tear them out, otherwise your fee will get cold. So as much as you have somebody is wealthy, somebody is mid middle class, somebody is poor, go according to your limits. Don't exceed your limits. These are the instructions of our Sharia. Marriage in itself is a beautiful thing and it's a good thing. Sharia recommends it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself used to get married and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got married to Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha at the age of 25 when she was 40. There was a gap of 15 years between the two. But in that case, there was some special case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranged that marriage. It was written from before that this is going to take place. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was made a prophet, he was 40 and she was 55. And he needed someone to take care of him and give him support at that time. And Khadija radiallahu anha was very understanding and very wise woman. And she took care of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She took care of his children. She took care of all the household matters. And that is why as long as Khadija radiallahu anha was alive, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa never got married to another lady. All his wives came after the death of Khadija radiallahu anha. And Khadija radiallahu anha died when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approximately 50 years old. In the year 10 after Nubuwa. 
three years before his hijrah to Medina Munawara. It was at that time that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married say, uh, Hazrat Sauda bin Zam'a radiallahu anha and Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. And for three years only Hazrat Sauda was with him. When he migrated and he came to Medina Munawara, after six, seven months, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha also came into his household. And after that, during the last ten years of his life, the other wives came uh, uh, entered in his bedroom. And the, the reason behind them was, one thing we have to remember, only one late woman, one wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was unmarried and virgin, and that was Aisha All the others had been uh, married before. They were either widow or divorced. And uh, there were many wisdoms behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa marriage to those ladies. Had special you know, reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would instruct, get married to so and so. And, and because of those instructions, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would get married to them. Hazrat Hafsa radiallahu anha was the daughter of Umar radiallahu anha. And Umar radiallahu anhu, when Hafsa became a widow, uh, he, he approached Usman, get married to my daughter. Usman said, no, I'm sorry, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not, I have no desire to get married at this moment. He, he already had Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa daughter in his marriage. So he said, I, I don't want another wife at the moment. He approached Abu Bakr Siddiq. Abu Bakr, please get married to my daughter. Abu Bakr Siddiq kept quiet. He didn't say anything. After a few days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself sent a proposal that I want to marry your daughter Hafsa. And Umar was over the moon. And Hafsa radiallahu anha came in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa After the nikah, Abu Bakr approached Umar. And he said, Umar, maybe the day you, are, you propose to me for your daughter, and I didn't say anything, you felt bad. He said, yes, of course I felt bad. Usman gave me the answer, but you never said anything. No, yes, no, no. So I did feel bad. He said, I kept quiet because I knew, I, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioning her. And I could not reveal his secret to you. So that's why I had to keep quiet. And I knew it was going to happen. That's why uh, I didn't say anything. So Hafsa radiallahu anha came into the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so forth the other ladies Hazrat, uh, Hazrat, after Hafsa Umm Salama radiallahu anha came into the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she was also a widow her husband Abu Salama radiallahu anhu was injured in the battle of Uhud and after one month he passed away and Umm Salama was alone she had no family uh, in, in, in Medina Munawwara so she was in a very distressed situation and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa proposed to her, got married to her, and she had small children. She brought those children in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa brought up those children in order to teach the ummah how to bring up your stepchildren, that how, how to treat them, how to be kind and nice to them and bring them up. So Umm Salama came in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu anha, she was also a widow. She entered Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's bedroom, but after three months she passed away. She was buried in Medina Munawwara. After that, Hazrat Zainab bint Jahsh radiallahu anha came into the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was first married to Zayd ibn Harisa, who was the adopted son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah Ta'ala revealed the ayah that her adoption and meaning adopting some child and making him your own and relating him to yourself is not allowed. A, a person should be related to his genetical father, who he, to his real father, not the adoptive father. So these rulings came in Surah Al-Ahzab. And before he used to be called Zayd ibn Muhammad. And from then on he was called Zayd ibn Harisa. So uh, Zayd ibn Harisa radiallahu anhu, he was married to Zainab bin Jahsh who was the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zainab was uh, the daughter of Umaymah binti Abdul Muttalib, the Pupi auntie of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Now, she was from a very noble family, but over here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Zainab, that marry Zayd ibn Haris. Now Zayd, was some time ago he was a slave and he was a freed slave. So there was a clash of culture between the two. And uh, Zainab said, I don't get married to Zayn. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, get married to him, that is for you. <laughs> and in the end, she agreed and got married, but they couldn't get on. There was always some arguments in the house. And uh, Zayn would come 
and relate uh, the arguments to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Rasulullah today this happened. She said this to me. She said that to me. She was rude to me. She said this. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do sabr, taqilla, wasbir. Do sabr, fear Allah." Now Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through Jibril that Zaid is going to divorce Zainab and you are going to marry her. <laughs> he couldn't reveal this to people. He couldn't say this to people that this is going to happen. And uh, he just kept it quiet. Now Zaid, he's still married to her. He comes and complains. And he says, please you hold on to her, you know, stick on to her. You know, you might taqillah, taqillah. Allah revealed all this scene in the Quran. وَإِذْ لِلَّذِي أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ زَوْجَكَ وَاتَّقِ اللَّهِ 